The Norman Conquest was the conclusion of a long and difficult drama that had started under the reign of Edward the Confessor, the last monarch of the Anglo-Saxon royal dynasty, and had continued for years before that. Due to his childless marriage, Edward was able to exploit his lack of a legitimate heir as a bargaining chip with many parties, notably Harold Godwinson, afterwards known as Harold II, the strong Earl of Wessex, who was eventually appointed as William's successor in 1051. Welcome to the Vikings Code, and today's video is going to be all about the Norman Conquest. It's a bit different from our usual Vikings video, but it's a very special one, so please like it, subscribe to our channel, and let's continue forward. The Norman Conquest of England, led by William, Duke of Normandy, started in 1066 CE and resulted in the establishment of one of the most powerful kingdoms in English history. As a consequence, England's political, economic, and social landscape would be changed for the coming years. William took a personal interest in the conquest. Once, he was offered a greater title, that of King of England. However, before his death in 1066, King Edward of England picked a different successor, Harold Godwinson, who was an English nobleman, as his successor. William, who had felt deceived, assembled an army and marched to England in the hopes of reclaiming his rightful seat atop the throne, which was getting more crowded at the time. Apart from Harold and William, there were many other contenders for the throne, including Harold III of Norway and Harold Godwinson's brother, Tostig, who were all vying for power. After a severe weather delay, William was able to invade the south of England just a few days after Harold III. Harold III had sought unsuccessfully to take the crown away from Harold, and he had died as a result of his efforts. Harold's forces were unable to relax, and they spent the next two weeks traveling south in order to meet with William. Harold died at the Fight of Hastings, a fierce and decisive battle in East Sussex that took place in October of 1066, leaving William as the sole surviving successor to the throne. Despite the fact that the ensuing march on London was met with minimal resistance, William was crowned on Christmas Day. William's invasion of England is often regarded as the last successful conquest of the country. At the beginning of his reign, King William was subjected to a variety of invasions, raids, rebellions, and threats. After many military triumphs and questionable methods, including his deadly harrying the North strategy, he managed to hang on. This tactic included destroying territory in the North in order to reduce the likelihood that rebel fractions would be able to consolidate their positions and fight his troops. In addition, William instituted new military plans, which included the construction of several castles around the land as defensive fortifications. The culture of the United Kingdom evolved considerably as well. The replacement of the English land downing class by Norman landowners resulted in the first step towards feudalism, which were initiated by William. This group of individuals received land directly from William, who did it often in exchange for military service. It was William's instruction that this new system of land ownership be documented in a detailed manuscript known as the Domesday Book, which was eventually completed. He also replaced the ecclesiastical elite, which was mostly composed of Anglo-Saxons with followers from the Normandy regions. In addition, the entry of the French language into aristocratic English societies had an impact on the vocabulary and composition of English language. In the years that followed, the Norman Conquest's outcomes established a bond between England and France. The French effect on the English language was not only limited to the adoption of French vocabulary, but also extended to politics, since William and his noblemen maintained an interest in the affairs of France and the European continent. With all this, and everything else, the Norman Conquest had some consequences. Historians have long argued on the magnitude and acceptability of the changes brought about by the Conquest. In terms of politics, William's triumph effectively cut England's ties with Scandinavia, putting the country instead into close touch with the continent, particularly France. The institution of land tenure and military service in England were the two most significant changes at the time. However, while the practice of holding land in exchange for services had existed in England prior to the conquest, William transformed the upper classes of English society by dividing the country among approximately 180 Norman tenants and chiefs and an untold number of Mesna intermediate tenants all of whom were held to their fiefs by night service. When the English aristocracy was almost completely replaced by a Norman one, it was followed by a corresponding shift in personnel among the highest ranks of the clergy and administrative officials. Anglo-Saxon England had developed a highly structured central and municipal administration, as well as a reliable judicial system. Every one of them was preserved and used by William, whose coronation oath demonstrated his commitment to carry on the English royal heritage. It was very uncommon for feudal justice to usurp the customary authority of shire and hundred courts, since the previous administration divisions were not displaced by the new fiefs. The common law of England was still being administered in these courts, as well as the king's court. The creation of a new but limited body of forest law, as well as the use of Norman trial by fight in criminal cases, in addition to the ancient Saxon ordeals, were among the innovations. The inquest method, which involves the sworn testimony of neighbors, has become more popular, both for administrative reasons and in court proceedings. 
In particular, William's separation of ecclesiastical cases from the secular courts paved the way for the later adoption into England of the quickly developing canon law. The story does not end here. William also made significant changes to the structure and character of the church in England. With the exception of Wolfstan of Dorchester, he replaced all of the Anglo-Saxon bishops with Norman bishops. Most significantly, he was successful in having Steigen, the Archbishop of Canterbury, disposed. Steigen had been in office unlawfully and was likely excommunicated by Pope Leo IX. And left Frank of Beck, a distinguished scholar and one of William's personal aides, appointed in his stead. The king backed Lefranc's claims to the primacy of Canterbury in the English Church in order to impose a more organized structure on the English episcopate. Lefranc's claims to the primacy of Canterbury were rejected by the English Church. William presided over a series of church councils, which were conducted significantly more regularly than they had been under his predecessors, and he passed laws to prohibit simony and clerical marriage. While Duke of Normandy, William was a staunch proponent of monastic reforms and he brought the newest reforming tendencies to England by replacing Anglo-Saxon abbots with Norman counterparts and by importing a large number of monks. William's other initiatives led to the resurgence of monistic life in England despite the fact he only founded a limited number of monasteries, notably Battle Abbey, named in honor of his victory at the Battle of Hastings. The saddest consequence of the conquest was the complete extinction of the English vernacular as a language of literature, law, and government, which was a result of the conquest. Written English did not emerge in official papers and other records until the 13th century, when it was gradually replaced by Latin, and then progressively by Anglo-Norman in all areas. A common misconception about the Norman conquest of England is that it was the result of one people invading the land of another, rather than the result of another governing elite seizing power from one ruling elite. Norman peasants who crossed the water to live in England which had a population of 1.5 to 2 million people at the time, did not constitute a large demographic shift. However, many Anglo-Saxon fighters escaped to Scandinavia following the Battle of Hastings, and some of them ended up in the elite Varangian guard of the Byzantine emperors, despite the fact that they had been defeated. To sum up the whole video, the Norman invasion of England, both the conquered and the conquerors, experienced long-lasting and profound changes. As England became stronger and more unified as a monarchy within the British Isles, and as a participant in European politics and warfare in the centuries that followed, the fates of the two countries were inextricably interwoven. Names of persons and places around England bear witness to the long-lasting impact the Normans carried with them from 1066 CE to the present day. And that's it for today's video. We hope you've enjoyed it. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. What do you think about the Norman Conquest? Stay tuned with us. We'll see you soon in the next one.